these two guys were standing behind us and I'm clearly pregnant and we've got our two year old and this guy was like, uh, I wonder what she's hiding under there. I wish I could rip that fucking thing off her fucking head. You know, knowing that I could hear him. When Mona and I met, it was 2012. I mean, it's, it's hard not to be corny and sentimental, but you know, for me, it was really love at first sight. Islamophobia just wasn't the thing that it is today. I don't know if I would have converted as readily or as publicly um, now as I did then. I kind of experience these two different like cities when I go out now. Like I spend most of the day with Safi and the world is just this kind of like friendly, you know, great place. And going out with Mona, people are not shy about staring. Sebastian's like, oh, this is my wife, Mona. People are like, oh, nice to yeah. meet you, like Muslim lady. <laughs> the FBI now believes the massacre in San Bernardino was an act of foreign-inspired terrorism. Shootings in Paris in two or three locations. After San Bernardino and the Paris attacks, it was really intense. As soon as we heard about the event, there was hardly time to mourn before it was like bracing for the backlash. There was a significant rise in Islamophobic hate yeah, crimes. Yeah. Just this afternoon, there was a fire at a mosque in Southern California. It is the latest in a string of violence directed at Muslims. We didn't leave the house for I think two or three weeks. I had this sense of this kind of blanket of dread. We just, we felt like we had to do something to like, you know, replace some of that trauma with, with love and connection. We were like, how do we get people to talk to us? Right. And so it was like, we, we bribed them with donuts. <laughs> I kind of had this idea of like Lucy in her like lemonade stand, <laughs> the psychiatrist thing, this very homemade thing. We took our son with us. We took my mom's dog with us, like three big boxes of coffee and three dozen donuts. So many people were like, don't do it. You're basically pu putting a bullseye on yourselves. We set up and there was kind of this little inhale of, you know, what's gonna happen. Do you guys want some donuts? The very first person, this, this kid walked up and he said, um, I just want you to know I'm Muslim and I think what you're doing is really cool. You know, and I just felt this like, mm -hmm kind of tingle. And the very next woman walked up to us with eyes full of tears saying, I'm so sorry for, for what your community is having to suffer through right now. Give you a hug. Right. A lot of people, they'd come up and they'd say, I don't, I don't really know what to ask, but um, can I have a donut? It was like, yeah, you can have a donut, you know. And Some people really asked you, yeah. like, where's, where's the, the Muslim? Where's the Muslim? I want to talk. I'm like, oh yeah, right here. Yeah. What should I ask you? Like, well, Ask us about our son. Ask, we're trying to potty train him. Ask us about potty training. Ask us about, you know, the Red Sox. That exchange meant everything. Oh nice talking God. to you Great guys. Nice you guys. It was a lot of curiosity and a lot of joy. But after that very first day that we went out, I posted just a picture of us standing in front of the signs that said, keep your heads up, Muslims of America. Friends kept sharing it and then their friends shared it and eventually it just went crazy viral. NPR was calling me and like the Boston Globe and Huffington Post and People Magazine and Al Jazeera. Mona Haydar wants to fight fear with free donuts and dialogue. The hashtag Ask a Muslim, it's still going on on college campuses and at functions and events all over the country. You know, people will just set up Ask a Muslim. It's that magic connection that I want to be the lasting thing from Ask a Muslim. Is your dog? Yeah, that's Ben Ben. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah.